Being a digital nomad and traveling the world while working remotely sounds like a dream. As with everything in life, of course, there are downsides. And let's talk about five downsides of being a digital nomad that you don't really hear said that often. Hello, hello, and welcome back, or simply welcome to my channel. I'm Danny, also known as Digital Nomad Danny, and I talk about all things travel, digital nomading, and everything else in between. So if you're not subscribed and you're into that stuff, I hit the subscribe button and let's get started with this video. Please excuse me for the horrendous lighting and camera situation. The thing about traveling is you never know what type of conditions you're gonna have in your accommodation, and this is honestly the best I can get right now. So now I don't want this video to come off as complaints about the digital nomad lifestyle. I have been a digital nomad since I was 19, I'm almost 24, so I have definitely experienced the highs and the lows of the lifestyle and have done it in quite a number of different ways. But being active on social media, I often see all of the great things about being a digital nomad projected for everyone to see and wish that they could be digital nomads but I don't often see the negatives behind being a digital nomad because of course as with anything there are of course negatives to this lifestyle so I wanted to talk about the five negatives that I have personally found in the four-ish years that I have been a digital nomad if you don't know what a digital nomad is it is simply someone that can earn a living off of their laptop or just remotely and just travels the world while they're earning a living instead of living in one place I started doing this when I was 19. I was working and studying in an online university, so it was a bit of an unstandard digital nomad way, but I have done it as a full-time traveler. I have done it as someone that has had a home base and then just travels but still comes back to one place. That is kind of where I am at now because traveling full-time ended up just being exhausting after the almost two years that I did it. So I do have a home base and then I travel every month or every other month depending on what I really want to do. So now that all sounds amazing, right? And I'm constantly seeing videos on TikTok and Instagram about, oh, how amazing it is to be a digital nomad. I can experience all this life. And that is true. I really do not take this lifestyle for granted. It has allowed me to do some amazing things. I have been to over 30 countries only because I've been a digital nomad and I can fund my lifestyle while I'm traveling. But you can't ignore the negatives that can actually have quite a big effect on you long term. Now these won't be in any particular order, but one of the biggest issue is a lack of routine and structure. When you're traveling constantly, it can be very difficult to have a routine. And that in turn can cause a cycle of unmotivation and unproductivity. And while yes, travel is a huge portion of this lifestyle, you do still have to work to fund this lifestyle. And if you're unproductive and unmotivated, that can make things kind of hard. So having to set your own schedule and actually stick to it gets a lot harder when you don't have the typical routines that you can build if you're staying in one location. Now, of course, this depends on how often you change locations. When I first started being a digital nomad, I was changing locations way too much and that definitely messed me up routine-wise. I now try to travel a lot slower. That does help, but still things like time zones, having to move accommodations, you know, uh, activities, stuff like that, they can really mess up your, your cycle and your routine. And especially if you work freelance, it can be kind of hard to actually motivate yourself to work and fund this lifestyle. So self-discipline is a very important trait to have as a digital nomad because when you're traveling, you just kind of want to travel, right? And then you really don't want to work. But of course, there's no fun without work to fund it. And it actually took me a very long time to figure out what works best for me and how I can battle this lack of structure and routine and still travel. So it's, it's a really fine line between the two. Now, another big one is loneliness and a lack of community. I know that a lot of digital nomads struggle with this, including myself. And when you're moving around a lot, it is really difficult to build a community or even have friends because you're constantly leaving those people and those that don't have the same lifestyle as you either don't understand it, don't support it, or you know, you just have a falling out because at one point they're tired of not knowing where the hell you are. I have definitely had friendships fall apart from old friends that were staying behind in Canada because there was just that lack of closeness and I completely understand that. I also know that many digital nomads, including myself, have a kind of dual struggle about missing out a lot on family events, especially those that have stayed back home. It's this back and forth fight between wanting to experience life, wanting to travel the world and live how you want to, but then also guilt of not seeing your family as often, missing out on important events, you know, having your parents get older and you not there to help them, that type of stuff. So I am really lucky that my mom is really nomadic like me, so I actually spend a lot of time with her because we're moving around together. But I know that people that have fully left their families and are just traveling the world, it can take a toll. 
And if you're introverted like myself, it can be even harder to make friends because it's hard enough in general. And then you're in new locations, often with a language barrier. You don't know where to go, things like that. And then if you know that you're going to be leaving within like two, three weeks or even a month, you kind of don't see a point. And I have definitely had moments where I have traveled for months and not had a single friend, which, you know, for some people it's a dream. Sometimes I like that. And then for some, that sounds like a nightmare. Lastly, on building a community is if you're not the type of person that goes out a lot, this can be very difficult. Like for example, I no longer drink. So bars and clubs are really not my scene. And in some countries where that is really uh, like a strong point in society, like for example, I'm in Seoul, South Korea right now, and drinking culture is huge here. So if you're not drinking, you're kind of the odd one out. And again, that's just another added challenge to finding friends. You also can't ignore the health challenges that actually come with this lifestyle. Frequent change in climate, diet, uh, exercise, or lack thereof, and completely different environments can really actually take a, quite a big toll on your health. I have personally experienced this, and I know that if you are going to really drastically different places than what you're used to, it can take your body some time to get used to it, and if you're there for a short period of time, that can really cause a whole array of problems. So some of the common symptoms that digital nomads have to kind of go through is digestive problems from new foods that maybe your body's not used to, jet lag, lack of sleep, complete fatigue, brain fog, stuff like that, which of course makes things like having to work to fund the lifestyle a bit harder. And then you're also, of course, going through challenges of limited access to healthcare, whether it's because the country you're in doesn't have a good healthcare system, uh, maybe it's a language barrier. I know I've had that issue because I'm a chronically ill digital nomad, so I have a whole plethora of issues on of its own. And going back to the thing of structure and routine, it can be really difficult to uphold an exercise routine. We all know that exercise is really important for your body and helps combat some of these symptoms, but it can be really, really challenging when you're moving around a lot. So like I said, self-discipline is one of the biggest, most important traits you need to have as a digital nomad for a whole lot of things to try to prevent yourself from pretty much falling apart because while it may seem like all fun and games, in reality, the, the things that are not shown on social media is how hard it is to actually keep functioning normally because we don't see it from our day to day when we're just living at home. But routines and structure are so important that when you're thrust out of that, your brain and your body are like extremely confused. Uh, not to mention not having a constant workstation uh, so you're kind of working in anywhere that you can possibly find which can make things really difficult and can cause a lot of back and neck pains because you're not in the most beneficial working position for you uh, i have had to you know work on planes trains buses cars whatever uh, not have tables or chairs it definitely can be a struggle now another thing that digital nomads have to keep in mind is financial insecurity now of course this can depend on what type of nomad you are some people have a constant income because they have like a kind of nine to five job and then there are some that are freelancers which is currently what i am so we don't know exactly how much income we're gonna have month to month it can be really difficult to predict how much you're gonna spend with this type of lifestyle because it will really depend on your location so budgeting is really like a 50 50 type of thing because you can predict how much you can spend but then until you actually get there you won't know and you have to keep a cushion for if God forbid things happen, and I've definitely had to use that before. And of course, there are a lot of costs involved with this lifestyle. You have to pay for insurance, more specifically digital nomad insurance, because yes, you need health insurance, but it's also beneficial to have insurance on your computer, your electronics, because that is how you make money, correct? And that can actually add up depending on how old you are, how much coverage you want, all that stuff. And living costs will seriously vary. Like for instance, I'm a digital nomad that house sits. So I will have months where I will spend zero on accommodation like I did last month living in Milan. I spent nothing. But now I'm here in Korea for the last month and I have definitely spent quite a bit on accommodations. So my budgets for January and February have been really different. And of course you are going through the potential of having your things break or get lost or get stolen because you are traveling so often and potentially you're in places where theft is more common. I know this last point is not exactly a negativity but it's something that I have to mention because it's one of the reasons that the word digital nomad can actually have a negative rep uh, and it is responsibility and being a responsible digital nomad because I have seen many on social media that really are not and it does paint kind of a negative picture of the lifestyle. And being a responsible digital nomad 
can include some added challenges because you have to go through specific extra steps to make sure that the lifestyle that you chose is not causing havoc on the environment, is not causing havoc on the cultures and people and countries that you have decided to visit because you have the opportunity and the privilege to actually have this type of lifestyle. Now, obviously, a majority of digital nomads are ones with powerful passports, including myself. I, of course, probably would never be able to be a digital nomad if it wasn't for my Canadian passport. And a lot of people take that as an advantage. So I think the first and most important part of being a responsible digital nomad is acknowledging how much privilege you have passport-wise, income-wise, because many of us are earning in USD or Euro to afford this, to be able to travel to all these different countries because many cannot. And that is a really important part that many people miss out. And if you follow Digital Nomad News even a little bit, you know that many cultures and local people hate digital nomads because of the things that they do when they get to a new place. I know this happens a lot in Portugal and things like that is they don't respect the local culture. They don't even try to learn the language. They don't respect the practices and the people, which can make things really difficult. And of course, they're making it a lot harder for the locals to actually live and afford their homes because we're kind of coming in and making things a lot more expensive. So it is a really fun line, but, but I have really been trying the last couple of years to make sure that I'm doing this as responsibly as I possibly can. I'm definitely doing my research on every country that I go to with cultures, languages, practices to be as respectful as I possibly can because I'm being welcomed. I am a guest and I shouldn't respect that. There is also an environmental aspect of nomading that people kind of don't think about because of course constant travel, which is often plane travel for people, does increase the environmental impact of this lifestyle. So I have definitely been trying to do a lot more bus and train travel, avoiding planes when I can, and doing everything I possibly can to minimize the impact of the lifestyle. But I think I might save that for another video if you want it. So while the digital nomad lifestyle is often glamorized on social media, there are significant negatives that you should know about before you start this lifestyle because it can kind of blindside you. I know that it did for me when I started it because these types of things weren't as known even a few years ago when digital nomading wasn't as big of a thing. But if you're aware of the challenges and you have the self-discipline and knowledge and ability to overcome them, you can have a very successful and extremely fun life as a digital nomad. While I say all these negatives, I am still very, very happy with my lifestyle. I don't think I can have a different type of lifestyle. And I know quite a few digital nomad friends that feel the same. So it is a balance as in all things in life. But I definitely would have wanted to know these types of things when I first started. So I hope that this video has been helpful for some of you. Let me know in the comments if it has been. I would love to chat about any of these aspects. And of course, there are so many positives of digital nomading. If you want, I can make that video as well. So I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you did, because that helps me out a lot. And I will see you in the next video.